if um, preschool and infant mental health is the last frontier of child mental health, infant and preschool mental health, uh, kids with developmental disabilities is the final, final, final frontier. And uh, the biggest take home message I think I can give you all is that um, a lot of mental health clinicians have very little to no training in working with these kids. So finding people who have, first of all, the interest in working with these kids and then secondarily training experiences can be very, very challenging. Um, many of the social workers that I work with um, have never worked with a kid younger than five and, you know, kind of freak out if you try to refer to them. Um, Psychologists and psychiatrists are more likely, at least in training, to have had some exposure, but that really varies depending on the training site. Um, when I was doing my child fellowship in the 80s, um, probably the only treatment that would have been recommended for anyone under five is three times a week psychoanalytic play therapy, where you met with the parent once a month. And obviously that's completely inappropriate. <laughs> as far as service uh, needs of kids, whether they have des uh, little kids, whether they have developmental disabilities or not. And then when I was teaching at the University of Washington, we decided to develop our own outpatient preschool mental health program, and they asked me to be the medical director, not because I had any special training in it, but because I was the only one who was interested in that age group. So um, it really, really is an area of, of great need and a lot more research needs to be done. Um, at this point, kind of the standard of care for treating little kids with severe emotional disturbances is family-based, not individually based. Particularly help for the parents in how to manage behavioral problems, how to help them with sleep problems, how to help, you know, find adequate resources, support for the parents. Um, there is a uh, evidence-based uh, treatment approach, which some of y'all might be aware of, called PCIT, called Parent-Child Interaction Therapy, and there are two agencies in the county which provide this um, interface in Casa Pacifica. And it's a, a very interesting program where uh, parents go to the, the clinic uh, for about 20 weeks. Um, it's a manualized program. The, the ch parent and the child are in a playroom, and then there's a therapist observing through a one-way mirror and the parent has a bug in the ear and the, the, the parent is literally coached in how to interact appropriately with their child and how to respond appropriately to a uh, child's misbehaviors. Um, um, and it's a very, very good program and it especially is good with the little ones. So I, I really uh, recommend that. Um, there, for children with uh, classical autism, Probably one of the most important um, interventions is one-to-one -one floor time with um, trained behaviorists, which tri counties <coughs> provides. Um, but that really is the only sort of individually based mental health treatment that I would recommend for kids under the age of five. So where, where do you refer here in Ventura County? Um, we at BCBH have a new program which is paid for through the Mental Health Services Act, which, again, don't want to be political, but is also up for getting slashed in May, um, called Zero to Five. It's based out of the Ventura Clinic. And um, these are clinicians that have been specifically trained in evaluation and treatment of preschoolers. Again, most of the therapists in the regular, you know, Ventura options, Oxnard options, CME options, all that, they often do not have any training in seeing little ones. Unfortunately, I don't know why this was set up this way, but the only way you can get referred to the Zero to Five program is through the Neighborhood for Learning uh, Centers, which I assume you all know about. I, and I have copies of, of uh, the numbers of where those are. Those are the early intervention programs through the school districts, okay? So if a referral comes, just, you know, a regular referral from you all comes to us at Ventura Options, for example, for a three-year-old, for a four-year-old, I cannot then refer to our zero to five program, which would be the most you know, logical thing to do. So what I end up doing usually is referring to CASA Pacifica or Interface for PCIT, okay? So just keep that in mind as far as 
where you send the initial, or where you tell the parents to, to call initially. Um, and, um, I'm, I'm one of the few uh, child psychiatrists out here at VCBH who does feel comfortable about evaluating little kids and occasionally, occasionally medicating them. Um, the most common reason that a, child, a little kid would be referred to me as a child psychiatrist would be for aggression. Okay, which could be due to many, many different problems. The first thing that I would look at with a little one with aggression is I want to know about their speech and language development because so many kids with air, uh, delays there, you know, they can't communicate their needs in a verbal way, so of course they're going to act it out. And the younger a child is, the more likely they're going to, they're going to show or exhibit any internal distress, whether it's anxiety or depression or anything, is through acting out rather than being more internalized. So um, probably 90% of the little ones that I see, they're there because of aggression. There also is often a concern about possible ADHD. Um, again, that's harder to diagnose in, the, in little ones because things that look like ADHD could be due to many other things. The second thing I want to look at um, if there's an aggress a problem with tantruming or aggression is what's the family environment? Is there domestic violence, is there neglect, is the mother using or the father using. Again, ch children need to get attention and certainly tantrums give you attention and if they're distressed, they're, that's what they're going to do. Um, sleep problems are always um, tricky for me, you know, in terms of what I usually see is when a kid has sleep problems is again, a family environment that's chaotic, that doesn't have structure, that doesn't help the child learn how to sue themselves and go to, go to sleep. And, you know, I don't want to just <coughs> medicate that away, especially in a preschooler. There's, so my standard for, for using medication to help with aggression or sleep problems is very, very, the bar is very high. Um, and after other therapies, you know, services have been tried and failed. And there also is very, very few, I can name maybe two, uh, medicines that I feel comfortable using in this age group because obviously, you know, use of medication in this age group, is not, there's not much research supporting the safety of it, and it's such an important time of brain development that I don't want to do anything to, you know, mess, mess, mess with that at, at this very important time. So most of the time, even though parents might be really wanting medication, I'm usually referring them back for more therapy or to begin a course of therapy to have the parent, you know, work on helping the parents help their kids gain more self-control. Um, in fact, again, in my training, I did not get any training in use of psychiatric medications in children at all, and especially not uh, for uh, preschoolers. So this is a this whole idea is of, of medicating preschoolers is a very new thing. I'm often horrified when I get referrals of you know three-year-olds who've already been on Risperdal, lithium just amazing stuff and um, um, the parents have no idea about the possible long-term side effects of these medications. 